Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you for joining me for another video. So as promised, uh, this is video number two. We are going for gold this week and we are going to have three videos. So where to start? Well, let's start with the birthday boy. Outside of all of the charities, organisations, patronages that Prince William is actually involved with and all of the projects that he's got going on, he has grown into not just an amazing man, but he's also been lucky enough to find an amazing, loving and beautiful wife who have built their life together over 20 years, 12 of which they have been happily married and now have three beautiful children. Prince William's relationship with his father has gone from strength to strength since he himself became one. And we can see the positive impact that this has also had on King Charles, who clearly has a close and affectionate relationship with his grandchildren. At 41 years old, William has overcome losing his mother at the tender age of 15 years old and turned his grief into something positive by helping others. It's sad that he has also been grieving for his brother or rather for the loss of the relationship. Diana would have been absolutely heartbroken, I'm sure of it, because Harry was always meant to have his brother's back rather than stick a dagger into it. But I think due to having such a supportive wife, and also having a close bond with Mike Tyndall and the rest of his family members, I feel that it's definitely more of Harry's loss than William's. William has become the future king he was always meant to be, but I believe with Catherine and the love of her family, the Middletons, he has also had stability and he has become a better man. I am in no doubt that Diana would be completely proud of him as he turns 41 and is now the Prince of Wales. So a big, huge happy birthday, which I'm sure I can say from the entire channel to Prince William on his birthday. So now let's get on to some more pomp pageantry and some fashion choices by the Princess of Wales, which I'm absolutely loving, of course. Let's talk the Order of the Garter. It is the oldest order of chivalry and was actually inspired by the tales of King Arthur. King Edward III loved the stories of the Knights of the Round Table so much, he decided that he was going to start his very own Order of Knights, hence the name the Order of the Garter. It used to only be Knights of Nobility, but now in modern times we have both men and women and they're not just aristocracy. 24 knights are chosen by the king and and it's to honour those who have either served the crown personally or directly, or they've been bestowed the honour for the recognition of their public service. It was founded in 1348, the Garter Day procession with their beautiful velvet robes and big white plumed hats see the knights start off by being invested inside the throne room at Windsor Castle. They then attend a lunch hosted by the king, then walk from the castle in the procession to the service at St George's chapel. It's quite the pageantry on display. Now, despite the fancy robes and the hats, the Princess of Wales made headlines again for her elegant and stylish outfit. Catherine clearly has a love of polka dot dresses and we have seen her wear many different types over the years, including a very similar one that she wore last year to Royal Ascot. But in all honesty, I prefer this dress. The vintage style shoes and the Philip Treacy hat just makes her stand out for the right reasons. The gorgeous design even managed to complement Prince William's striking and feathery hat. They really are, when you see them together, especially when they're all dressed up, they are such a handsome couple. Hardly surprising that they have produced such beautiful and cute children. Now, Catherine wasn't the only one who was turning heads. Sophie, Duchess of Edinburgh, watched the parade by Catherine's side, looking summery and stylish herself in a beautiful floral pink Amelia Wickstead dress. And the two women were seen chatting and laughing as they waited for their husbands to walk past to the service. Someone managed to capture the perfect moment when Catherine and William locked eyes and the cute couple gave each other big grins. This was quickly compared across social media as a similar photograph of the couple was captured back in 2014. All I can say is get a room guys, get a room. Now, for those of you that did obviously watch yesterday's video, it has not been a good week for Harry and Meghan's big global A-list stardust dream that they thought that they were going to have off the back of the royal family. It would seem that after Bill Simmons, the Spotify exec and top podcaster himself, turned round and openly called them in a scathing attack that they were effing grifters, and the fact that Meghan has been labelled... Oh, the Millie Vanilli of the podcasting world. 
absolutely brilliant. But since that has happened, well, let's just say that the floodgates have indeed opened. We've now heard from Kelly Osborne, who is Sharon and Ozzy Osborne's youngest daughter. She has spoken out and I would say it was a bit more even colourful than Bill Simmons' description of the couple. So I've PG 13'd it a little bit for you. I think that Harry is an effing twat. I really do. He's a whining, whinging, complaining, woe is me. I'm the only one who's had mental problems. My life was so hard. Everybody's effing life is hard. You were the prince of a whole goddamn country. You dressed up as a Nazi and now you are trying to come back as the Pope. Suck it. Wow, I love Kelly. She's very much like her mother. She does not mince her words. I can imagine there's a little bit of Kelly that might be peeved because Sharon, if you remember, she actually got kicked off of The View. It was all done under the guise of like the racism and stuff and this was all stirred up due to Sharon sticking up for Piers Morgan and Piers Morgan, it was all to do with their lies that they told on Oprah, which they've since backpedal. So you can understand why Kelly might have a little bit of a thorn in her side over them. The fact that Kelly Osborne herself has millions of followers across social media, it's another kick that I'm sure the couple could probably have done without. Now, Kelly's not the only one to stick the boot in. Even ESPN analyst Stephen A. Smith has weighed in on the subject since his friend Bill Simmons has spoken out. And he said, if Prince Harry and the Duchess of Sussex aren't complaining about the royal family, I don't know if anybody cares what they have to say. Well, no, they don't. The only reason why Harry and Meghan got all of these big deals was because of their connections to the royal family and because of the drama that they were creating. They were the ultimate clickbait. They were selling details of stories that no one has dared ever done about the royal family. As you know, I have called Harry and Meghan one trick ponies for a very long time. And now that they have run out of material because they're not even being invited over, they, they're stuck. They've got nothing left to sell. They're not likeable. They're not marketable. So it did come as a bit of a shock when I was lying there in bed, you know, crack one eye open, grab the phone, read the news. The Mail on Sunday released the story, the Duchess of Dior. Wow. Meghan is on the edge of signing a huge fashion contract with fashion house Dior. The deal would be so big that we would see Meghan's face plastered absolutely everywhere and forget about her one tiny podcast that epically failed. That's obviously Meghan's PR trying to push herself away for the fact that her podcast sucked and Spotify have dropped them. I didn't really even care about that podcast. Bing! Now, at first, when I read this, I didn't believe it. I thought it was a case of Harry and Meghan, or typically Meghan, is just throwing enough stuff out there and hopefully something would stick. It still attracts headlines, doesn't it? She gets a little bit of coverage. People talk about it. But it's actually true. She did have discussions with Dior. It didn't get very far. And it's not clear whether the discussions were one sided. But I think she definitely tried. It was reported that it has been the hot gossip around Beverly Hills or social scene for a few weeks now. And I can just bet it was Megan. We, we've heard these reports that Megan's often seen out partying. I bet she couldn't contain her excitement. And she's like, oh, guess what? I'm going to be doing this. She's probably been dropping all these little seeds, these little breadcrumbs in hope that if she manifests it, then it will come true. But hey, no one could knock Megan's manifest in. She, I'm pretty sure she manifested about marrying a prince and it becoming the next Diana. I mean, she dressed like Diana. She married into the same family as Diana and she ended up marrying one of, you know, Diana's sons. I mean, sure, some people might call it manifesting. I think other people might call it stalking. Now, we have definitely seen a bit of a push with this storyline to do with Dior because we've seen Harry at the court case. He was making sure that he was showing off his Dior shirt. Then we had Harry um, with, I'm sorry, the back of it looked badly tailored. But when he came for the King's coronation, he was wearing Dior. Meghan has been seen with the Lady Dior handbag where she had her own initials put into it. <laughs> I say her initials, her titles. She had DSSOS. <laughs> but my personal favourite of what that could stand for is, of course, by the Royal Rogue, who actually said it stands for delusionally self-serving, overblown scammer. 
and I think that absolutely perfect. Basically, a grifter. Now, of course, Meghan has been spotted in Dior a few times when she became a member of the royal family. One of the worst outfits that Meghan ever wore and the most expensive was a hundred thousand pound Dior dress in Morocco. It was rumoured that she was hoping to uh, gate crash like she did the fashion awards. She was going to gate crash the Oscars and that's why the Morocco trip suddenly appeared and they were shipped off. But she wore the dress nonetheless. It looked like a cheap version of the beautiful maternity dress that Catherine wore. Now Catherine's dress I think was less than 10,000. Meghan, 100,000 pounds and it looked awful. It definitely was not her best look and for anyone that says oh she cares about philanthropy and humanitarianism no one would have worn a 56,000 pound engagement dress unless you are marrying a chic maybe let alone a hundred thousand pound curtains you know you just wouldn't do it I'm sorry Dior you can't blacklist me because I'm never going to be able to afford anything not even a pen <laughs> Now, obviously, I'm not saying that Meghan is an unattractive woman. She can look incredibly beautiful. Those of you that have followed me for some time, you know I give compliments when compliments are due. But let's be honest, when she's worn Dior, it's been bad fit, bad underwear, wrong size. In fact, a lot of the fashions that Meghan has worn, no matter how much money she's spent on it, she has worn some real monstrosities that are different sizes for her. They're quite clearly freebies. They don't look quite right. And with all of the money in the world to access to the best stylists. She always looked like that mm, she got dressed in some sort of coachy or Oxfam in the dark. And that's the problem. For Meghan to become an ambassador of Dior, as many have pointed out, where is she going to wear her clothes? She needs to be a walking billboard to show off her clothes. What's she going to do? Have a custom Dior ball gown for hiking, going for sushi? shopping in Montecito. I mean, we know that Jodie Comer pulled that off in Killing Eve, but it's not something that I can see Meghan actually managing to pull off. Meghan is not an A-lister. She is not invited to A-list events. She is not invited to the Met Gala. She is not invited to the Oscars, the Academy Awards. She is not invited to any of the hot parties or birthday parties around town. So I'd struggle to see when she could actually represent the fashion house. Now, and another thing that's not going to work in Meghan's favour, and as I've said before, treat people nicely on your way up because they will kick you twice as hard on your way down. Meghan has a terrible reputation for how she treats people. She was reportedly a monster to work with, with her wedding dress, the Givenchy team. Maybe not the main designer, but the other people, and especially all to do with the drama surrounding bridesmaid dresses. Meghan was unhappy with everything. She kept chopping and changing. She was reportedly never happy with anything that the designer came up with, hence why her dress fitted her so badly on her wedding day. Reitzmans, who she worked with when she was Rachel Zane in Suits. Bearing in mind, she was just a cable TV actress. This is pre-Harry. She was apparently so awful to people and stole a pair of shoes, if you've read Tom Bauer's book, that they have sworn that they will never work with her again. Directors that have had her appear in cameos for films, videographers, fashion photographers. There are not very many nice stories about how Meghan treats people. Again, this industry the fashion industry all talk. So why on earth would they want Meghan representing them? Let's be completely honest here. Meghan doesn't have that same, oh, what should we say, je ne sais quoi, that Charlize Theron does, Natalie Portman, Jennifer Lawrence. You know, they, these women have got these huge A-list careers. You know, they go into these big events. They are the walking fashion horses. Meghan doesn't have any of that. Megan advertising perfume. Well, I think that one would be dead in the water as soon as Dior saw this little bad boy. I mean, admittedly, it was for a part in a film, but it's just absolute cringe. Now, it's not just the Brits that are being super critical. In fact, more of the entertaining news is actually coming from across the pond. Who better than Meghan Markle to front a perfume like Poison? I mean, come on. Oh, that's and maybe good. the two of them could have launched their own new fragrance, Lazy and Untitled. It smells like old cash with a hint of Oprah. I love that. Smells of old money with a hint of Oprah. Just meow. That was Fox News. Brilliant. So all of this being said, and the onslaught that seems to be happening about Harry and Meghan, it would be very understandable why Dior have turned around and quickly shut the door and put a statement out. Dior was contacted once the story broke and they said that they were nonplussed onto how the story came about. This is the meaning of nonplussed. 
Hmm, let's take a wild guess as to who might have put the story out there. As I said, throw in something so it sticks. On top of that, when the fashion house was contacted, the spokesperson said no contractual discussions took place, nor had there been recent contact with Megan. So obviously Megan had been in contact with them and had been trying to work towards it, but the fact that they said no contractual discussions had taken place. So it's obvious that it didn't make it very far. I think Megan, she is a steamroller. She loves to bulldoze her way in to parties, to events, to, to award ceremonies. And I think Dior saw it coming. The fact that you've got Anna Winter, who is not a fan because she admired and respected Queen Elizabeth so much. If you are not in with Anna Winter, you are not going to be in with any of the big fashion houses. Now, I'm not one for kicking a girl when she's down. But to be honest, with you after how Harry and Meghan treated the Queen in her final years, I'm going to make an exception. And in all honesty, I'm not the one doing the kicking. Royal Ascot has just started. And of course, it is so all about the fashion rather than the horses when it comes to the royal ladies. And one particular royal lady wore an incredibly beautiful and special outfit. And that was Queen Camilla, who was dressed in Dior. Now, it could just be pure coincidence. But considering that Meghan deliberately overshadowed several huge events for Camilla, especially the big domestic violence speech that she was given, where Meghan played games, released photographs that she'd had taken, you know, days beforehand, she deliberately tried to overshadow all of the members of the royal family in her brief 72 engagements. So I personally like to think that this was actually done as a dig on purpose. A little bit of a subtle deliciousness that I think that Meghan possibly does deserve the amount of times, as I said, that she's tried to overshadow royals. It's like Camilla is going, <laughs> I can wear Dior. And let's be honest, why would Dior want a D-less duchess wearing their clothes when they have got a real queen? So speaking of Royal Ascot, I will be back with you, of course, on Friday for the third video, for the third instalment of this week. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you in the comments and I will be back with you Friday. So take care for now. Have a wonderful day. Bye.